All right, so the next part that we're going to get into still deals with requirements for terminations on devices. However, this section is a little bit more uh, utilized than the other sections we've previously looked at, and it strongly dictates how we'll be using other parts of the code later whenever we're selecting conductor and passives. So I like to break this section out separately from the other termination provisions and put a little bit more emphasis on it. And the sections that we're going to be looking at are going to be in 110.14c, 1, A, and B. But we're going to be starting with 110.14c right here and kind of breaking it down as it really kind of lays out the groundwork of what we're going to be talking about. So what Part C tells us here is that the temperature rating associated with the impacity of a conductor shall be selected and coordinated so as not to exceed the lowest temperature rating of any connected termination conductor or device. Now I want to talk about that first part in a little bit more detail before we go on to read the rest. So the first thing that we have to understand with this section is that any conductor that the NEC talks about is going to have a given temperature rating uh, that it can be exposed to based on the insulation rating. I'm going to go ahead and move us to a table that we will see later in the NEC and talk about in more detail. This is table 31016 for conductor impacities. Now, as we can see, looking at 31016 on a very high level without getting into too much detail, uh, we have three columns that repeat themselves again, which are 60 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, and 90 degrees Celsius. Now, if we look within the box below each of those temperature ratings, we have different types of conductors. So we have tops TWUF in the 60 degrees Celsius, tops RHW, THHW, so on and so forth in the 75. And to point out a few in the 90, we have common conductors like THHN, THHW, uh, XHHW, XHHW-2, so on and so forth again. So what the NEC is telling us is that these insulation ratings can, in effect, essentially, be heated up to this temperature, whatever temperature they're calling it is in, without negatively affecting the rating or condition of the insulation. Now, as we should know with electrical current, when we move current through a conductor, it creates heat. And that's based on the resistance of the conductor that we're using. So that matters in relation to this insulation rating, because if we take the given same size wire and we put more current on that conductor, it's going to increase the temperature of that conductor. Because of that, depending on what type of insulation we have on the size of a conductor we have, it affects how much impacity we can put on that conductor. Again, very high detail without getting into the code uh, terminologies here or rules. If we just look at this 14 gauge conductor right here under the size AWG column, we see under the 60 degrees Celsius column, it is good for 15 amps. Under the 75, it's good for 20. And under the 90, it's good for 25. So in essence, the NEC is telling you that if you place 20 amps of current on a 14 gauge conductor, it's going to heat up to an amount that would not cause a 75 degree Celsius insulation uh, rated to fail. So if we go back to our section that we're reading, the NEC is telling you that when you're selecting the impacity of the conductor, it has to be coordinated such that that impacity temperature rating would not exceed the lowest connected device. Because in addition to conductors, the other items that we use in the electrical industry also have temperature ratings, such as breakers, switches, receptacles, lugs in a panel, and other items. So if we were to take a given circuit uh, utilizing THHN conductors, and connecting to a breaker and a receptacle. Again, going back to our table, we had said that THHN was rated for 90 degrees Celsius, meaning that, again, the insulation can be heated up to 90 degrees Celsius without causing the insulation of the conductor to fail, which would be 25 amps. 
Uh, now again, we're not getting into the code rules just yet of whether we could actually do that by code. Uh, we're just talking essentially of the theory here uh, in the relation to the other items. So again, we're using a conductor that we know the insulation is good for 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, and let's say that the breaker were rated for 75 degrees Celsius, but the receptacle were only rated for 60 degrees Celsius. Again, back to our section here. In coordinating with the lowest temperature rating of any connected termination conductor or device, even though the wire is rated for 90 degrees Celsius, since the breaker is only for 75, and then the lowest item, the receptacle, is only good for 60, we would have to abide by the ampacity rating in the 60 degree column for that given wire size, even though the insulation on the wire is rated for 90 degrees Celsius. And again, we'll talk in more detail later on in the course about selecting a temperature's actual ampacity and which of those columns we're allowed to use. Now, the code does go on to say in the second part, however, that conductors with temperature ratings higher than specified for terminations can be used for impacity adjustment correction or both. Again, this is just an idea to keep in mind for once we move on to selecting impacities, is that essentially, in our exact scenario we just had, where we can use, we have a conductor that's good for 90 degrees Celsius, but we're having to terminate it for 60 degrees Celsius, if there were other things in that circuit that may affect the opacity, such as the ambient temperature or how many current carrying conductors we have in the same raceway, we would be allowed to use an adjustment on that based on the opacity in the 90 degrees Celsius. But again, the main thought here is just understanding that these conductors have different temperature ratings based on their insulation, and that affects how much opacity we're allowed to put on the conductor. Now, moving on to part one here, uh, I'll just briefly mention it since it sets up parts A and B. When we're actually selecting what temperature rating we can terminate a conductor based on, there's more that we have to take into consideration than just what's the temperature rating of the insulation. As I just mentioned before, even though THHN is rated under the 90 degrees Celsius column, that doesn't necessarily mean that we can always use it on the 90 degrees Celsius capacity. So what part one tells us is that the rating for that will be based on 110.14C1A or C1B. With that being said, we're going to go take a look at C1A and C1B and see what they say. So starting off at part A, this is listed as termination provisions for equipment for circuits rated 100 amps or less or marked 14 AWG through 1 AWG. So in essence, if we're going to be terminating a circuit and that circuit's opacity is 100 amps or less, or we're using 14 gauge wire through 1 gauge wire, the provisions of this section are going to apply. So number one, tells us that we're going to be using conductors rated for 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, in other words, we have to use the 60 degrees Celsius column uh, for our impacity. Now, if we're using a conductor with a higher temperature than 90 degrees Celsius, or if we want to, the number two here would apply, which tells us conductors with higher temperature ratings, provided the opacity of the conductors is determined based on the 60 degrees Celsius opacity of the conductor size used. So again, if we go back to an impacity table briefly, in essence, what part A told us is that we have to use either for number one, a conductor rated 60 degrees Celsius, or we can use an insulation top, conductor top that is a higher impacity top, such as these found here, as long as the impacity is in accordance with the 60 degrees Celsius column. So even if we were using THHN conductors, if we're using them for sizes 14 through 1 or for a circuit that's 100 amps or less, then we still would have to go by the opacity in the 60 degrees Celsius column. And then I also do want to point out number 3, which is kind of the exception to that rule. Conductors with higher temperature ratings if the equipment is listed and identified for use with such conductors. 
so this is the one caveat section to this is that if we're terminating to a device or a piece of equipment that is rated for a higher temperature, say 75 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Celsius, then we are allowed to use that higher temperature rating uh, impacity amount. So for instance, if we were terminating uh, a circuit that was a breaker and again, say a receptacle, However, in this situation, the breaker and the receptacle are rated for 75 degrees Celsius, and we're using wire that's rated for 90 degrees Celsius. Well, then we would be able to base the opacity of that circuit conductor on the 75 degrees Celsius column. Now, moving on to part B, we see termination provisions of equipment for circuits rated over 100 amps or mark for conductors larger than 1 AWG. And we see that number one, again, conductors rated 75 degrees Celsius. So now, if we're using a bigger wire or connecting to a bigger circuit, we're allowed to start right off the bat with the 75 degrees Celsius column. And then we essentially have the same clause for number two, where it tells us conductors with higher temperature ratings provided the impacity of such conductor does not exceed the 75 degrees Celsius impacity of the conductor size used or up to their impacity if the equipment is listed and identified for use with such conductors. So in summary, in looking at parts A and B here, uh, part A more or less tells us that if we're going to terminate to a circuit that is 14 through 1 gauge, or 100 amps or less, we have to either use a conductor that's rated 60 degrees Celsius or a conductor with a higher temperature rating than 60 degrees Celsius, but the impacity still has to follow 60 degrees Celsius, or we can use a higher temperature rating for our final impacity, provided that all the equipment and items in the circuit are rated for that. Part B tells us that if we're terminating to a circuit rated over 100 amps, uh, or marked larger than one gauge, or using larger than one gauge, we can use the 75 degrees Celsius column for our impacity, or we can use temp uh, temperature ratings higher than 75, assuming the impacity rating is no more than 75, unless, again, all the equipment and items in the circuit are rated for higher than 90, or higher all of the items in the circuit are rated for higher than 75 degrees Celsius. So again, this section, 11014C, uh, and the things that follow it, are mostly set up for how we're going to be using our impacity tables later. Again, the main one we'll be using being this table, 310.16. And they don't really affect anything that we're going to be looking at for 110. Uh, but again, these are very important sections since they tell us how to use those. Uh, now we will be revisiting this section once we move on to those impacity tables, but I did just want to go ahead and spend some time during this lecture uh, to point out the requirements for those items.